Good afternoon and welcome to Nationwide on the Network Service of the NTA. I am Olajide Bello. We start off by linking up with Ademola in our Lagos studios for the presidential visit to Lagos and other stories from that zone. Ademola, it's over to you. Thank you, Jide. Good afternoon and welcome to Lagos. President Mohamedou Buhari has commissioned security equipment and vehicles donated by the Lagos state government to security agencies to beef up security in the state. Nosa Osula reports that the president, who was represented by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, commended the Lagos state government for its efforts in making the state a safe haven for investments. The president assured Nigerians that his administration would do everything within its power to improve the standard of living of citizens, adding that the present challenges being faced by the country will soon be a thing of the past. The focus of the current budget, the focus of the federal government's budget, is on infrastructure. Thirty percent of our, of, of our budget this year will be on infrastructure. As you know, part of that infrastructure are the railroads. Both railroads start from here in Lagos, or at least both, if you look at the Lagos Canal uh, Rail, it starts from here. The Lagos Calabar also starts from here. So there are incredible opportunities for Lagos and for Lagos State with the development of the rail routes, both the one going to the north and uh, the coastal route going all the way to Calabar. Aside from that, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway is also an important project which will be focusing on in this particular project site. In his speech, Lagos State Governor Akil Ambodi reiterated the commitments of his administration in creating an enabling environment for businesses to thrive in the states. In addition to our earlier contributions, we are further demonstrating our resolve to strengthen the capacity of our security agencies with 140 brand new Ford Ranger pickups and 335 power bikes fitted with communication gadgets, helmets, bulletproof vests, and other kits at a total cost of 1.85 billion. The Inspector General of Police, Solomon Arasi, urged the various security agencies who are the beneficiaries of the equipment to guard them jealously. Since we came all those first time, I did promise you that the whole country is giving what is expected. And the officers and men of the command have worked tirelessly and assiduously to ensure that the crime rates in Lagos is within tolerable limits that will attract foreign direct investment and other investment in Lagos, Nusa Usula, NCA News. Meanwhile, President Mohamedou Buhari says safety emergency preparedness must occupy a vantage position in government programs and policies at all levels. The president, who was represented by the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshimbadio, stated this while commissioning some rescue operations equipment at the Lasema Emergency Response Unit in Oshudi, Lagos. Musa Toliat completes the report. President Mohamed Buhari, represented by Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbaju, lauded the initiative by the Lagos State Government to reposition and boost the capacity of the state's emergency preparedness, response, and rescue operations. He enjoined state governments in the country to place emphasis on safety of lives and property with a view to enhancing economic growth and development in the country. We, I, I've been speaking to the Lagos State Government about the homegrown school feeding program which, as you know, is one of the most important programs of this administration. And we expect that in this state, there will also be the home loan school feeding program so that people will be able to benefit along the value chain. Lagos State Governor Akimumi Ambodi assured Lagos residents of an improved response time to emergency, adding that his administration is poised to forestall needless loss of lives through various disasters. With this rescue center, our initial goal is to significantly bring down response time by our responders. Over the coming months, we will work tirelessly to do so. And in the next phase of this project, we will roll out dispatch centers across key areas within the state. Various emergency response agencies at the event commended the effort of the state government in emergency preparedness. It speaks to the fact that as a state, we need to be productive and ensure that we are ready to respond 
promptly in terms of time and speed and capacity to, to respond. This is another means of creating job opportunities and employment. Liberation should expect the best from us. It's worth emulating by any state government and even other agencies of government that really, truly want to impact positively on the populace. The president's representative later commissioned the reconstructed Agua Okota Road to his gridlock in and around Isolo and Apapa Oshodi Expressway. In Lagos, Musa Toliad, NTA News. And moving on to other stories now, Christians have been admonished to always put their trust in God at all times if they want their aspirations realized. The assistant provincial pastor of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Province 49, Paul Nana, gave the admonition at the ninth year anniversary of the Bread of Heaven Parish of the Church in Lagos. Tunis Haiki reports. Pastor Paul Nana said the growth of the church is basically by the grace of God, pointing out that the pioneer pastors of the church had placed their trust in God which won the ministry or the accomplishments in terms of evangelization and blessings. He said the theme of the celebration, God is here, captures the importance of God's presence in the church, which he said brings up blessings and upliftment to the parishioners. The assistant provincial pastor advised the congregation not to relent in their dedication to the service of God and humanity. Yeah, but the word it says God is here, Jehovah Shama. God is here, God is in this country. He has been helping us, and as we apply you know, that knowledge some more, I believe that God will help us more. The parish and area pastors said 10 years in the growth of the church was by the grace of God. Learn to hold on, even in a time like this, that in his appointed time we will be out of the woods. Um, our Father and the Lord, the General Overseer, told us at the beginning of this year that things will be tough initially. But at the end of the year, by the end of this year, all will be well. I came to church who had lost hope, and we've seen God transform their lives variously, not one, not two, not three. And so if you ask any member of this parish, they can um, variously testify the presence of God in our midst on the basis of the miracles we are witnessed in this place. The event had special ministrations by the choir, women, and children. In Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. As the countdown to this year's month of Ramadan intensifies, the need to educate Muslim faithful on the best ways to prepare for the fasting season was the focus of a pre-Ramadan lecture organized by the University of Lagos Muslim alumni. Our Yusuf Jibo completes the report. Yes, lecturer, Professor Yusuf Wahid, of the University of Stellenbosch, South Africa, who spoke on the topic, Muslims as ethical beings, said the core essence of Ramadan is to instill piety and moral uprightness in Muslim faithful. He enjoined the gathering to imbibe the tenets of Islam and prophetic traditions with a view to observing the month-long Ramadan fast that will be acceptable by Allah. Muslims need to learn to internalize their faith to learn what it means to sacrifice, to offer themselves in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that those qualities should be used to perpetuate and advocate for human coexistence. Other speakers at the pre-Ramadan lecture spoke on the topic, the Muslim between the ideal and the contemporary perception. Some of the Muslim faithful reacted to the pre-Ramadan lecture. Uh, month of Ramadan, uh, which assists us to be able to renew ourselves and be able to commit ourselves to uh, humanity. What we should be after is we should try to exemplify Islam with our character, with our morals. Muslim all over the world, we should leave the Quran. If we leave the Quran, there will be less problem in this world. The event featured presentation of scholarships to some students as well as free medical screening exercise for participants. In Lagos, Awal Yusuf Jibo, NTA News. Well, that's our package from Lagos. It's back to you, Olajide, for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Debola. And moving on now, 
Nigerian Television Authority begins airing of the Thinking Nigeria series with the first episode on Nigeria's political resilience and changing times. The documentary, which airs tonight at 10.30 p.m., offers perspectives on sustainable democracy and steady push to entrench enduring values under the Buhari administration in the last one year. This time round, Nigerians decided it was better to learn how to improve the system rather than push system collapse. Accountability, impunity we lost it, but happily that has been restored. So I think we are moving in the right direction. We are in the process of getting to full throttle. Uh, it has not been easy, that is obvious. All NCA stations are advised to join the network service at 10.30 p.m. for the documentary. And now to the legislature, the Senate has postponed its first national retreat on pension administration in Nigeria, earlier scheduled for 25th to 27th May of this year in Lagos. A statement from the chairman, Senate Committee on Establishment and Public Service, Senator Emmanuel Polka, says the postponement became necessary to give time for some participants billed for the retreat, but was presently involved in the amicable resolution of differences arising from the recent increase in pump price of fuel. A new date for the retreat will soon be announced. And now to transport matters, the Minister of Transportation, Chibuke Amechi, says the bill on the establishment of the National Transport Commission will, among other things, provide for efficient operation and regulation of the sector. The minister said this in a public hearing by the House of Representatives on the bill. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nkwa reports. At this public hearing on two bills, one to establish the National Transport Commission and that to repeal the Nigerian Railway Corporation. To deliver in its mandate of planning for the nation, the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, said the training is meant to improve the skills of the officers in the service delivery. Joy Uzo reports. On the, assignment that is before you. the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, says implementation of the 2016 budget has started with funding being released strategically to kickstart the economy. The Minister, however, noted that implementation process requires well-trained officers who will monitor performance and generate requisite data for the ministry. So the purpose of this is to remind these officers of uh, their role and their function in change management and re-engineering of our business processes in all of the MDA so that we can achieve and deliver more efficiently on the mandate of each ministry. Director General of the Bureau of Public Service Reforms, Dr. Joe Abba, emphasized the need to reform performance and evaluation of civil service workers to improve efficiency. We're working with the Office of the Head of Service and National Salaries, Incomes and Wages Commission. Uh, to look at uh, putting in place a process of job evaluation so that people's uh, uh, pay is based on an evaluation of their job description. And that's why we've made the selection to train the whole department and representative of every department and unit as well as um, our parastatals. If the keyword is change, we really have to look at all the arms of government and see where it's not performing well and what areas we can improve upon. For the next five days, experts from various fields will be delivering lectures to the participants. ...are introduced to the rudiments of the administration of justice. As an institution, the judiciary is not and should never be indebted to anyone but the Constitution. Judgments and decisions of courts must be apolitical and free from bias at all times. 75 judges of high courts across the country and caddies of various Sharia courts are undergoing this induction course. A larger number in this figure are of the federal high court, which, like most other courts in the country, are in their need of additional hands to help in the dispensation of justice. From the National Judicial Institute, Femi Okewu, NTN News. Thank you there, Femi. The Minister of Niger Delta, Usani Oguru Usani, says the present administration is working through a cross-section of government ministries and agencies to address the resurgence of the militancy in the Niger Delta. 
Speaking on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria, he said the Buhari administration will explore every available avenue to restore calm and peace in the Niger Delta region. Oyeyemi Ajayi has the details. The recent images of the militant group, the Niger Delta Avengers, has continued to generate concern to the government and Nigerians. Devastating effects of the activities such as bombing of oil facilities have resulted in huge economic losses and environmental damages. The guests were of the view that whatever grievances the so-called Avengers might have, they should use peaceful means to ventilate them. Before you carry on such agitations thinking that you are defending a cause of secession, you must be able to be sure that you are gauging the temperament of the other people that constitute that region. We are from South South as well, from Niger Delta. Have they asked us whether we want to be part of that agitation? And why would a section of the people now conduct themselves in such a manner that they want to defend the cause of what we are not all part of? Are they defending us? Um, but they're going about it in the wrong way. If issues like this come up, they're supposed to tackle it legally if it has to do with legal connotation, or administratively. And that's why we are there, to listen to them and uh, ensure that uh, whatever the grievances or issues they have are uh, tackled. Uh, A youth activist, Marvin Yobana, advised that the amnesty program should be expanded for the new agitators who wish to take the path of peace. In terms of people who say they are being marginalized, uh, it beats my imagination to think about in what aspects are we as Niger Delta has been marginalized at this stage? Because we had the case that the Independent Corps Pop System Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, Zona Helkota Yola, presented the Chief Medical Director of the hospital, Professor Abraham Tanyu, with a letter of recognition. He said ICPC will continue to partner with the hospital to better inject anti-corruption and transparency principles at the institution in order to achieve efficiency and effective service delivery. Frequent attacks by insurgents in 2014 has greatly hurt food production in this area, thereby compounded the existing environmental challenges such as low rainfall, soil degradation, and desert encroachment. A 50-year Damari Emmanuel said that the two years without farming activities were full of socioeconomic challenges. Her story is not different from that of other farmers who survived the attacks of insurgents. I need throat now. No money. Yes, chemical if the will help us with it. So we will not leave them. Like I said, we put in place structures that will continue to help them to recover from the shocks or the damages caused by the insurgency. And before the roofing program exists, we will continue to give them logistic support. We need to make sure that this rainy season that is coming is fully utilized and uh, our farmers go back to farm and, and uh, start producing something they can eat. As the 2014 attacks remain a history that will never be forgotten by the mayor. and nurture the uniqueness in our kids. To all the unique children of the world, happy Children's Day from Indomie. Indomie noodles, tasty nutrition, good for you. Before 2005, nothing celebrated African cinema. From 2005 to 2016, makes it exactly 12 years, we created the African Movie Academy Awards, the biggest and best award for African cinema and people of African descent all over the world to celebrate the works that they have done in motion picture. We look forward to welcoming you to the 12th edition of the African Movie Academy Awards in Potakot, 
River State, Nigeria, known also as the Garden City. On the 11th of June, there is no other place to be. Africa Movie Academy Award, AMA, welcomes you to Port Harcourt, the Garden City, June 11th, 2016. You're welcome. Always is. We have lived together as brothers and sisters since long time in Moriva. We had no mind that we have spoken different languages and celebration our cultural and diversity. No bombing, no courtism, no kidnapping. Nowadays our children are trampoling to courtes. Today we are suspicious one another. All this notorious behavior have scattered all over Nigeria. When are you going to change? More. When are you going to stop? Terrorism and wanted visitors. Kidnapping are criminal. Cultism are barbaric. Do not destroy this country, oh. Our country, Nigeria, are blessed, oh. Are you see what I'm saying? Support Nigerian police force in their civil war against terror, kidnapping, and cultism. Report any bad move around you. See and under talk, I kill old age. And to hear and does not behavior, I kill small begin. All, All of us are have the duty of building Nigeria, Nigeria free of crime. crime. That, that are our dream. dream. This message is from the Nigeria Police Force. Welcome back, and if you just joining us, this is NTA Nationwide. And now to a bit of politics after the weekend's parallel conventions of the People's Democratic Party and the resultant power tussle, Chairman PDP Board of Trustees, Senator Walid Jibril, has reiterated the need for all concerned members of the party to break down law and order and protect lives and property. Chinyere in Enugu is standing by with outcome of Governor Gwai's meeting with traditional rulers in the Southeast. Chinyere, it's over to you. Good afternoon and welcome to Enugu. The Southeast Traditional Rulers Council has re-emphasized the need for federal and state governments to take proactive measures to prevent illegal position of arms in the country. This formed part of a discussion during a meeting between the council and Governor Ifani Ugwani at the government house in Ugu. Ijoma Ugweke reports. It was an opportunity for Governor Ugwani to intimate the royal fathers on steps taken by the state government so far to ensure adequate security of lives and property in the state and the entire southeast. He said a judicial commission of inquiry has been inaugurated to unravel the circumstances surrounding the unfortunate incidents at Nimbu Uzowani. Part of the measures that we're already taking in this regard is the reactivation and revitalization of Neighborhood Watch Association in every community in the state. All we do is in consonance and in keeping with the SR laws of the local state. Chairman, Southeast Council of Traditional Rulers, Eze Eberechi D, appeal for total disarming of his men while calling on governments not to be involved in the proposed bill on grazing reserve. Our position is that cattle reserve is a private commercial venture and that the government should not bargain into it. It will be a favorable group of citizens of the country on giving to the teammates of others. The meeting was attended by Igwe Nemeka Achebe Obi of Onicha and other traditional rulers in the southeast. In Enugu, Ijomu Gweke, NTA News. Work has resumed in some of the ministries in Enugu State following the suspension of a nationwide industrial action by the Nigerian Labour Congress. Amaka Owo has details. The meeting held earlier last week between the factional Nigerian Labour Congress and the federal government, which ended in a deadlock, resulted. Professor Eke said it was agreed that transfer certificates should be reintroduced for students moving from one school to another within the zone. We are going to synergize and coordinate standards of establishment and operation of private schools in Southeast Nigeria. The following which also agreed to enhance the teaching of Igbo language in schools, how the Commissioner of Education in Enugu and Abia State, 
Professor Uche Eze and Professor Ikechi Mboju noted that students should take the external examination where they did their JSS2 and SS1 classes with a call on parents to identify with the struggle. The Iman Anambra State Commissioners for Education also said they want to give education the right approach in the zone. In Abakliki, Emmanuel Amoye, NTA News. Other in Nigerian Legion Anambra State Command have graduated over 100 cadet officers after six months of rigorous training. John Ogwejo for reports that the passing out parade afforded men and officers of the command the opportunity to empower wives of their fallen colleagues. From the 1919, Nigerian Legion is the umbrella organization of all air service men and their families. The passing out of the trainees is in accordance with Decree 37 of 1998, which created five categories of membership for the Legion. While acknowledging salute during the match past, Governor Uyo Biano, represented by Senior Special Advice on Security, Osta Christopher, urged the officers to adhere strictly to the code of conduct that established the Legion. National Chairman of Nigerian Legion explained to the new officers that they are not permitted by law to carry guns. Anambra State Commandant of the Legion, Lieutenant Colonel Prince John Obonna, retired, pleaded with Anambra State Government to employ the newly graduated officers in various offices and schools in the state, as deals and donations from these officers are used to support the families of their fallen colleagues and the aged ones. The good news is that Mr. President has directed that all the ministries in the federal capital employ the services of ex servicemen. What has been made? possible by the provision of the law that we can absorb those young men and young women to help in serving their nation. 50 widows of their fallen colleagues selected from across the 21 council areas of the state were empowered with bags of rice, wrappers and grinding machines. John Oguejo for NTN News. And that does it from here. It's back to you, Olajide, for the continuation of Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Chi. And moving on now, the wife of the... ...of the journey we keep in our archives. We intend to continue to create pictorial history of this great man whose only asset lies in his integrity, which Nigerians use to gauge and trust him. To me, this is not the end of the journey. The photographs of prominent Nigerians, including President Muhammad Buhari, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, party leaders, wives of the president and the vice president, as well as other Nigerian politicians from the length and breadth of this country, were on display. In Abuja, Ali Wukabir, NTA News. Minister of Science and Technology Dr. Obunaya Onu has restated the unflinching support of the ministry to removing hurdles faced by micro, small and medium scale technology entrepreneurs in its efforts to strengthen manufacturing and industrialization in the country. The minister said that this when he received an audience of the National Association of Technology Incubation Entrepreneurs. Justin Bem Uyi reports. Going by the policy drive by the present administration to diversify the economy through every means available, the efficient utilization of technology and innovation as the engine of growth, development and projection of power in the global community remains eminent. But the micro, small and medium scale entrepreneurs in the technology incubation industry recount that challenges are encountered in their efforts to drive the commercialization of innovations and manufacturing. We are using this opportunity to solicit the Honorable Minister's uh, assistance, propose policy to the federal government to direct all agencies of government to patronize our products. The ministry assures of its full assistance to tackling the said challenges as it concerns job and wealth creation. We want good ideas to end up in the marketplace. We must strengthen the linkage between research and innovation in the youth industry. The Minister of Science and Technology urged the group to remain ambitious in expanding the strength of their businesses, which will translate to the growth of the nation's economy. Justin, Bemu, NTA News. 
The National Automotive Design and Development Council has intensified campaign on the need to stop the sale and utilization of substandard auto parts in order to reduce road traffic accidents in the country. At an interactive workshop on identification of fake and substandard automobile spare parts in Lagos, the Director General of the Council, Aminu Jalal, called for the acquisition of techniques that will lead to safer roads and improved safety of automobiles in the country. The council is building three labs that are that where we can go and test parts imported, both produced and imported parts and components uh, to make sure they conform to standards. The workshop exposed basic identification techniques for the detection of substandard auto spare parts, which is expected. Peace is a solution. The participants are expected to stay here for five days and they are drawn from the Nigerian Police, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Foreign Affairs, National Boundary Commission, and some in private individuals from private organizations. At the end of the day, they are strategic peace managers in Abuja, Salehu Abdullahi, NTA News. Thank you, Abdullahi. And you're still watching NTA Nationwide. We we'll take another break for some messages. Don't go away. The struggle for independence had been a long and tough one. Our founding fathers and compatriots sacrificed their comfort and even shed their blood. We cannot at this point in history afford to spirit away their sacrifices for immediate but temporary gains of today. Let us emphasize what unites and not what divides us. Working for the unity of purpose with a stronger vision for a better tomorrow. NTA, growing with the nation. Together, no matter where you come from, no matter your religion, we are one. Let's live together. Let's stop fighting each other. Let us live as one. It doesn't matter where you come from, your tribe or religion, man, woman, or child. It doesn't matter who you are. Put Nigeria first. No matter where you come from, no matter your religion. Develop when we're always in crisis. Families have become refugees in their country. No matter our differences, show some understanding. No matter where you come from, no matter your religion, we are one. Let's be together. Nigeria, the only country we can train with remarkable potentials to excel. Let us believe in ourselves and change our attitude for the sake of our country and generations unborn. Let us revive our cultural values, which are our essence as a nation. Let us renew the spirit of patriotism and hope in our dear country. Do not take or give bribe. Be punctual always. No more African time. We can't expect to be global citizens and operate on African time. Join the queue. Insist that people are attended to on a first-come basis no matter who they are or where they come from. Nigeria, good people, great nation. Thanks for being there. And now to sport. Coach Squat Naji insists on the best detigress for the 2016 Rio Olympic Games as Rubicon Polo team retains President's Cup at the 2016 Abuja Unity Polo Tournament. Details and sport update with Kene Emabudike. Head coach of Nigeria's women basketball teams, Coach Naji, says only the best players will be selected to represent the country at the 2016 Rio Olympics. Coach Naji, who recently reduced the players in camp to 16, is optimistic that the ongoing sessions at the indoor sports hall of the Abuja National Stadium will boost the Tigress's performance as they prepare for the Rio Games. Whether home or foreign base, they know that if they don't put up their best, they will not make the change. The Defense and Police Officers' Wives Association, the POA Sports Week 2016, has ended in Abuja with the Police Barracks Youth Team defeating the Army Barracks Youth Team by a long goal in the final football match. 
president of Depoa, Omobolanle Olanishaki, says the event is designed to promote sports and exercise as important to healthy living. It is believed that through this, we can discover some good talents. As we all know, good exercises serves as tonic that refreshes the body. Rubicon Polo team in white jersey on Sunday retained the President's Cup at the 2016 Abuja Unity Polo Tournament after defeating the trademark polo team by six to four and a half goals in four chokers, in spite of the one and a half goal awarded to the runners up to level the handicap difference between both teams. Dogonyaro Farms won the Guards Challenge Cup on superior point at the expense of Capital Builders, while the Guards Brigade Trophy was claimed by Almat Group, which beat Dataku Polo Club by seven goals to three. With sports update, Kenei Imabodike, NTA News. That's it on NTA Nationwide. Many thanks for being a part of it. I am Olajide Bello. Good evening.